Welcome to What Are We Playing This Week, the show that aims to recommend you some good games that time may have forgotten. Because in 3 days a new Hitman game will be out, well part of it, I'm gonna recommend you a few games that are all about assassinating things in the cover of shadow and darkness and secrecy and in general not about mass murdering things and people and stuff and blowing up buildings. Well, you can play them like that, but you shouldn't. They're assassination games, not postal. First off, we've got Dead to Spies Moment of Truth. The second game in the Dead to Spy series, which is a bit funny because the third game will also be out soon, on the same day as the new Hitman game, and uh, whoever decided to release it then is not gonna do the game any favors, because Hitman is episodic and cheaper than Dead to Spies 3 Alakine's Gun. But Dead to Spies 2 is a fine game. It's basically just like Hitman, only you play as a Russian agent that's going undercover in all sorts of places like Nazi Germany in World War II, the UK, Eastern Europe, even in the USA. Moment of Truth has solid gameplay mechanics. The stealth is okay, they're well implemented, so is the disguising aspect, which is basically the same as in Hitman. And it has a good balance of stealth situations in its missions. Namely, you're not always stuck in an enemy encampment, not always stuck sneaking through an enemy base where everyone is there to shoot you. You also have more peaceful places to infiltrate, more social gatherings like high class parties and I think there was one level in a university. It also has usable vehicles which were never a thing in the Hitman games. Also because it's set in World War II, don't expect any high tech gadgets or any advantages advanced weaponry. It's more in line with what you'd get from a Commandos game in terms of equipment. Actually, if you think about it, the spy in Commandos would basically be the main character in Moment of Truth. You can find this game on Steam for the price of 10 euros. You will, of course, find it cheaper during sales and probably on the 11th when the sequel is released. Speaking of sequels, Hitman Blood Money is my next recommendation, because by far this is the best game in this series. Maybe not the greatest in terms of story, because all the things that happen are sort of tangential to the plot and don't really get involved until way later on when you actually have to go in as 47 and sort stuff out, but in terms of gameplay it is without a doubt the best. Now I was a little bit skeptical when they said this game was coming to Xbox because well things tend to get dumbed down on consoles but for Hitman that was a good thing. They didn't dumb it down they just simplified the interface making it a lot easier to play. Not an easier game just easier to play. If you played the first Hitman you know how horrible the interface was. You had lists over lists over stuff and it didn't flow well. Blood Money on the other hand flows perfectly and it has the best gameplay in the series. With open world environments where you can do whatever you want to achieve your goal. It's the kind of game I played as a challenge to myself with no weapons. I mean just the fiber wire and okay maybe, maybe I saved my gun, my pistol, my single gun with one bullet just in case I needed. But for most times I just enjoyed finding new ways to solve the puzzle. Because at its basis Hitman is a puzzle game, a really good one. One where the pieces move and you have to guess where they're gonna be and how you're gonna deal with them. And if the new Hitman is gonna fall flat on its face like Absolution did, then it's probably still gonna be the best one in the series. And it's on Steam now for about 9 euros. But again, you can get it for like 1 euro during sales or probably during the release of the new Hitman on the 11th. Lastly, we have a game that's not really like Hitman and Moment of Truth, namely because you never discover yourself, but it's still a stealth assassination game and it is fantastic. Mark of the Ninja. This is by far one of Clay Entertainment's best games ever made. You have to sneak through the shadows and assassinate your targets without being heard, seen or felt. And you play a ninja, a katana wielding, shuriken throwing, smoke bomb, I think had a smoke bomb, deploying ninja with a grappling hook. Even though it's a 2D game, you don't actually have to kill everyone, just achieve your objective and on the way collect some new upgrades and get better equipment. It's an absolutely fantastic game that I encourage you to
to play because it proves that you can do stealth in 2D and it can be glorious. And someone should tell Ubisoft that with their Assassin's Creed 2D series. You can find Mark of the Ninja on Steam for the price of about 15 euros, which is kind of a lot, but it's a fantastic game and also you'll probably find it on some humble bundles from time to time again it's worth every penny it is a masterpiece of game design well that's it for this week unless i get garroted by 47 i'll be back next time with more gaming recommendations till then keep an eye out for suspicious bald people if you enjoyed this show, hit the like button, subscribe and share it with your friends. Or, if you thought it was horrible, then share it with your enemies and make them suffer. We shall be your weapon of vengeance. But if you liked what you saw, you could, I don't know, maybe donate because basically YouTube is horrible at revenue by using the link in the description or just buy my book. It's a fantasy book about, well, a lot of stuff. I guarantee it won't suck, and if it does suck, you can find me here and complain about it. Unlike some game developers, Ubisoft, I'll actually listen to your feedback.